Hey everyone, it's Eric here from that. Let's get another video for you guys today. Today, we got a what? Probably read the title, it's probably right above me, right? Or, boy, um, when you have a YouTube video, right? It's right below me. I think it's right there. So, it looks like we'll be doing a data recovery for this one. It's Western Digital Drive. Um, so we have it here. It's a little bit of an older one, and the reason why it's uh, it's outside of the case here is because actually the customer had it inside an enclosure. It's one of those um, Western Digital, um, not the cloud ones, but just one of those uh, my books there. And usually inside when it's a bigger, taller drive, it's usually that it's inside is um, three half inch drive. So why is it removed already? Well, the customer tried to uh, remove the drive because it actually wasn't powering on whatsoever. There's no noise. You couldn't hear or uh, feel the drive um, spinning up or anything like that. So uh, that has like a power data line um, that you can remove because it has a USB type of interface. It's not like this one which is a regular type of SATA interface, but connects to a USB so you can use it on like, uh, as you, you can use it as like an external type of device. So it wasn't working. They plug it in the sled, something like this, and it wasn't powering up either. So we'll imagine that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, to make sure. So what we need to do is uh, we can connect it here. We're going to go ahead and see for that one because we have our sled here. And we have a light on the back that's going to show something. But when I click the button, there's nothing happens. It's completely dead. Um, that makes sense on what's going on there right for it. Um, that's why the customer's here. So if it is turning on and you hear maybe like something like a clicky noise, uh, make sure you turn it off and uh, bring in to us and we can go ahead and take a look at it there and see what's going on further because you don't want to damage the drive um, if it's still not coming up right or if you hear a noise which isn't a good thing um, so this can still have it though uh, because maybe when you power on you might hear something uh, like any type of click noise if there's any type of mechanical failure but we know at least that there is a power issue and that's usually the case with uh, the PCB here because this is where your power data line is that's how this communicates down here it's usually through a SATA connection um, this may be a little bit different if you have one of the smaller drives that are Western Digital because those are USB uh, board. They're basically, they have a board that's a USB interface and not a SATA interface, which is a lot more difficult because to communicate with the drive itself, um, you need to convert it to a SATA connection. We have a whole video to explain that. I'm not going to talk about that in that one if you guys are interested because they have a hardware level type of encryption on it. But let's see what's going on here with this drive. Um, I think the best thing to do first, let's remove this PCB because we can see it looks a little bit brownish here. Maybe there's a burr or something obvious there. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of, of the this, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look to see a little bit further. So let's go ahead and just do that. All right, guys, I apologize for the audio. I had to redo this whole part again. Um, probably heard that in the beginning. I tried my best to see what I could do. But um, yeah, so we're getting back into it. Uh, we removed the PCB here, and we're just checking to see if there's any obvious damage. But we don't see anything crazy obvious now. So I think the best thing we can actually go into the thermal cam and we're going to go ahead and plug that in because we can actually um, see what's going on with that. So let's go ahead and plug it into our sled here. We're going to make sure um, we see the damage in the thermal cam because usually thermal cam can show something, especially when there's no light. You're going to see something on the board that's not allowing that to really do a power on and send data, right? So let's go ahead and check. We see that there is this uh, area in the corner here. It looks like one of these components um, is getting pretty warm. Um, we're going to turn it on again. Yeah, there we go. We can see that's gone. And that makes sense because that's close to where the power and um, data line area is right there. Right? When you plug it in, usually it's close to where the, the plug-in is. Right? It makes sense because that's where power is coming from. So we see that the short is in this corner here. Looks to be a pretty common uh, problem and place for this something like this to happen. So let's go ahead and we're going to go under the microscope, take a look at it a little bit further. So we're going to go see. We see this area. We don't see any obvious damage to it, but clearly it is um, a problem. Sometimes it could be on that circuit there that can cause that and maybe something else flares up there. But we, we kind of know this. We've seen this before. So it looks like this one is giving a problem. Um, let's go ahead and just uh, remove it. Beautiful. Let's see how just set.
All right, so let's plug it in. Now we can see this is normal activity. You can see the controller getting warm and another power area. So it looks to actually be okay. So let's go ahead and screw back the PCB. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in now. We can see this light come up. So let's plug it in. You see our light comes up now. I feel the disk spinning. Let's check the screen capture. So I'm bringing up disk management here, and it's taking a very long time. It's just configuring. Okay, so now what it's saying is, is you must initialize the disk uh, to access it. And um, we actually just made a video about something like this that's pretty similar. Um, we see that it's not initialized. That's the one that we're, we're looking at for here. Um, sometimes if it's unallocated, maybe there's a hardware level type of encryption, but we need to use our data recovery tools to go further on it. So let's go ahead and plug it into our data recovery tools and uh, see what's going on. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. And let's see, and this is going to help us communicate with the drive in a different way that Windows can. We can see everything looks to be actually healthy so far. The drive has come up, it's recognized, you can see the capacity. That's really good and that's a lot different than what Windows saw. So we're going to continue to work on it there. We're going to go ahead and check the heads and we see that there are six heads total and they all look to be healthy, which is good. So let's go ahead and see if we can see the data. And it looks like we can see it. So that's really good too. And now at this point, especially when there is a problem with the drive, we're going to go ahead and image it. So we're going to image it and then we'll extract the data right after that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing the data recovery on a Western Digital three and a half inch hard drive. This is one of those Western Digital My Books. And uh, yeah, you can see it's usually a lot more involved <laughs> than it always looks. Um, so you never really know. It's, it's always good watching these videos too because it's, it's interesting to see what other problems can possibly happen because you never recover the data until you recover the data. Thanks again for staying to the end. I know I had a little bit of audio issues in the beginning there. I apologize about that. I know it was a little bit low and a little, little bit rumbly. Didn't sound too great. So thanks for you guys for sticking through to watch the whole video. Um, appreciate all you guys' support. It really does mean a lot to us. Um, that you guys watch our videos and you guys are interested in data recovery and especially for uh, motherboard repairs on their laptops. We got a lot of stuff on this channel. We got motherboard repairs, logic board repairs, Macs. We specialize usually in Macs do liquid spill repairs. And we also do data recovery because now we're a data recovery center now. We got actually all the tools. We got a clean room. We got all of the other advanced data recovery tools uh, necessary for that. You guys see what we do here. And um, yeah, hope you guys learned something you guys enjoyed. If you guys are interested in doing data recovery or a mail and repair. We have all the contact information linked in the description below. And yeah, we'll go from there. So see you guys next video and take care. Bye.